We're asked to consider the sequence 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, and so on, with a sub 1 equal to 5. Part A, we're asked to give a recursive definition for the sequence. Analyzing the sequence, notice the pattern is 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 3 is 17, and so on. Because the pattern is we're adding a constant to each term to get the next term in the sequence, or because terms of the sequence have a common difference, we have an arithmetic sequence. If we wanted to calculate the common difference, the formula for the common difference is d is equal to a sub n minus a sub n minus 1, which means that we have an arithmetic sequence to find the common difference. We can select any term except the first term and subtract the term before it. Notice if we use the first two terms, the common difference d is equal to 8 minus 5, which is equal to 3. But again, we can select any term except the first term and subtract the term before it to determine the common difference. Notice 23 minus 20 is also equal to 3. So now that we recognize that we have a common difference, we can determine the recursive definition where the recurrence relation is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus d. So we have the recurrence relation that a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 plus 3, but we also need the initial condition, which is with a sub 1 equal to 5. Remember, for a recursive definition, we need the recurrence relation as well as the initial condition. Part B, we're asked to give a closed formula for the nth term of the sequence. It's important to recognize here the first term is identified as a sub 1, not a sub 0. So looking in our notes below, when we have an arithmetic sequence, we have the closed formula a sub n equals a sub 0 plus d times n, when a sub 0 is the first term, and then we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times the quantity n minus 1, when the first term is a sub 1. So because our first term is a sub 1, we need to use the closed formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the common difference d times the quantity n minus 1 which gives us a sub n is equal to a sub 1 is 5 plus the common difference of 3 times the quantity n minus 1. Let's go ahead and simplify this by clearing the parentheses and combining like terms. We have 5 plus 3n minus 3, and therefore the closed formula is a sub n is equal to 2 plus 3n. Notice when n is equal to 1, a sub 1 is equal to 5. When n is equal to 2, a sub 2 is 8, and so on. This is the correct closed formula for the given sequence with the first term as a sub 1. Part C, we're asked, is 2,627 a term in the sequence? To answer this question, we will substitute 2,627 for a sub n into the closed formula, and then we'll solve for n. If n is a natural number, then the term is in the sequence, if we get a decimal or a fraction for n, then the term is not in the sequence. So we begin by setting up the equation 2,627 equals 2 plus 3n. First step is to subtract 2 on both sides, which gives us 2,625 equals 3n. Then we divide both sides by 3. Simplifying, we have n equals 2,625 divided by 3 which is equal to 875. So because n is equal to a natural number, the term is in the sequence. Not only is the term in the sequence, because the first term is a sub 1, we know that a sub 875 equals 2,627. 2,627 is the 875th term in the sequence. For part D, how many terms are there in the sequence 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and so on, all the way out to 1,568? First notice, this is the same sequence we've been working with all along, and therefore to determine how many terms in the sequence, since the first term is a sub 1, we need to determine n by setting 1,568 equal to a sub n in the closed formula. So we need to solve the equation 1,568 equals 2 plus 3n. First step, subtract 2 on both sides, which gives us 1,566 equals 3n. 
divide both sides by three. Simplifying, we have n equals 1,566 divided by three, which is equal to 522. So again, because the first term is a sub one, we now know a sub 522 is 1,568, and the sequence has 522 terms. I hope you found this helpful.